Dear Luca, dear Guy Riders, General Director of ILO, dear delegates, dear friends, thank you for the invitation to address as Prime Minister of Portugal the European Trade Union Confederations Congress on a such a challenging year for Europe. This year, we hold European elections, which will lead, lead to new European institutions. We are working on a new strategic agenda for the next five years, and we are negotiating the budget for the next seven years. Moreover, these years, European elections are very special because they are the first in which the citizens born in the 21st century will participate. For all of these reasons, more than ever, these elections are about the future. Ahead of these week's elections, let us not forget that the historic fight of trade unions against inequality is a never-ending fight. We are gathered here today to boost this fight, a fight against the gender gap, against homophobia, against xenophobia, against regional asymmetries, against social and economic inequalities. To win this fight, we need to renew our citizens' hope and confidence in the future and in the European Union. These elections are a battle of hope against fear. It is fear, it's fueling populism that undermines democracy, nationalism that threatens peace, protectionism that limits growth and job creation, and xenophobia that offends human dignity. More than a currency, a market, or a customs union, Europe is a community of shared values. It is our duty to remember and to defend the European values, to protect Europe so that Europe can go on protecting us. To defeat fear, we need to strengthen confidence in Europe as a decent society. We need to respond to the anxieties, the concerns and the fears of our citizens. Our, confid our confidence in the European Union, Union results from the evidence that none of the great challenges that we face will be better tackled outside or without the Union by each member state acting alone. To face climate change, the digital transition, the globalization, the threat of terrorism, we need to stick together. United, we are stronger. Confidence in institutions is directly linked to the respect for the sovereign and democratic will of the people. Being part of the European Union doesn't take away from the people the power to choose. In Portugal, we proved that it was possible to change policies and at the same time to respect the common rules. We turned the page on austerity and people regained trust in the democratic institutions and in the European Union. As we turned the page on austerity, we boosted growth. Since 2017, we are growing above the European Union average, giving us the first years of real convergence 
with the EU since we joined the euro in the beginning of the century. Unemployment fell more than 12% to 6.5% for last March. It is the lowest rate since 2002. Long-term unemployment and youth unemployment decreased more than total unemployment. During this period, we created 360,000 jobs and 280,000 people left unemployment. At the same time, job security increased. Permanent jobs contracts account for 89% of net job creation. Against a strong criticism from neoliberal sectors, we increased the minimum wage by almost 20% and lowered income taxes. Each year, wages grow at a faster pace, having grown an impressive 3.6% last year. Over a half million people were lifted from poverty and a severe material de deprivation. We did all this while bringing public deficits down to 0.5% last year and shrinking public debt from 130% to 120% of the GDP. We did all this not in spite of turning the page of austerity. We did it because we turned the page on austerity. The results are clear to see. Respecting democratic will of the people increases confidence in institutions and brings results for economy. That means democracy is the best antidote against the populism. We can also increase confidence in the European Union through a new social contract. A new social contract to ensure high quality education for all, an innovative and dynamic economy with better jobs, fair wages, and a sustainable balance between professional, personal, and family life. A European housing plan ensuring new generations the freedom to live their own life. Our first priority is therefore to address our citizens' fears and expectations by giving them hope, confidence and security. Hope, hope by investing in sustainable economic growth in the decent work, taking advantage of the changes in the energy paradigm and of the digital transition addressing them both, not as a threat, but as an opportunity. Confidence. Confidence by investing in education, training and lifelong learning, developing solid and versatile skills in our education systems, promoting upskilling and reskilling, thus enabling workers to be prepared for change and for new and better jobs throughout their lives. We have to prepare young people for life, not for the market. We have to make sure that robots and artificial intelligence give all of us more free time to enjoy our lives and avoid that anyone becomes a slave of a robot, or as its life ruled by an algorithm. Hope, confidence, 
And last but not the least, security. Security. We must promote inclusive labor markets and protect our jobs. Our social model, our high environmental and food safety standards. For this, we need, we need a strong trade policy. We will not achieve this by promoting protectionism, but only by promoting fair trade in the fairer world. Our goal is not a social race to the bottom, but to globalize our social model for other regions in the world. We must ensure security to every family and at all ages, ensuring access to universal social protection from cradle to grave, healthcare, housing, decent work, childcare, and care for the elderly. Our economies must become more inclusive, not ensure integration in the labor market of those with more difficulties. Social rights are our distinctive mark. Europe's way is not to sacrifice social rights and high social standards. Europe's way is to reset our social model and develop our pillar of social rights to maintain our internal cohesion and at the same time to be more competitive in the global market. Europe's way is not to become a fortress closed to the world. Europe's way Sorry, Europe's way hmm, promote, is to promote dialogue and partnerships with other global players and to engage with United Nations 2030 agenda. Dear friends, we must complete the most ambitious project that we have launched so far, the Euro. Without completing, completing the economic and monetary union, there will always be risks of a new crisis and we will not have the solid foundations to building the future of Europe. Today, we are better prepared than in 2008 to respond to economic and financial crisis. But let us have no illusions. The structural problems and fragilities of the Eurozone still remain to be solved. The symmetries and imbalances between its members reduce potential growth and threaten the stability of the single currency. If we want a solid and stable Eurozone, we have to strengthen economic and social convergence. There is no better guarantee for its sustainability. That is why Portugal is pushing forward the creation of a fiscal capacity for the Eurozone to support investments to promote convergence and increase the growth potential. This should be the primary function of the budgetary instrument for convergence and competitiveness that will be adopted by the European Council in June. This is our priority because convergence is the best long-term economic and social stabilizer. But we don't forget that the Eurozone also needs tools to stabilize our economies in times of crisis. And the most effective tool is the European Unemployment Insurance Scheme. We also need to give the European Union a budget that matches its ambition. We cannot continue to overpromise and underdeliver. 
the union has to be capable to re of responding to the new concerns of the citizens. Climate change, migration, globalization, automation, terrorism. Yes, these challenges do exist and we, and we have to face them. But if we were to provide an effective response to these new challenges, we cannot weaken the foundations of our union, such as the structural funds that have done so much to bring the union to the everyday of our citizens in each region, city or country village, from the heart of the continent to the most ultra-peripheral region. If European citizens are demanding more of the Union, then the Member States have to give more to the Union. And so, let us be clear, we cannot wish to do more if we insist that the Union's budget should not exceed 100% of the gross national income. We cannot want more from Europe without giving more to Europe. And we cannot want more from Europe without a better use of what Europe, Europe gives us. With a fair tax system which protects, which, which protects our small and medium enterprises from the unfair competition of the digital giants, fights tax evasion and uh, financial speculation, we can reduce inequalities and, at the same time, increase the Union's own resources to respond to our citizens' expectations. We need a new social contract to renew the trust in security of our citizens and their hope and confidence in the European Union. The new citizens of this 21st century deserve a Europe that continues to ensure peace, freedom and democracy and shared prosperity in the same way they have been ensured to our generations over the last six decades. The achievement of these goals requires strong social dialogue. Social dialogue is crucial to promote fairness and competitiveness at national, European and international level. It is a key instrument for a better governance and for the promotion of social and economic reforms. Social dialogues improves the design of a policy measures, contributes to their effective implementation and improves the quality of the outcomes of social policies. In the context of economic and job crisis, of accelerate change and reforms as the one we face in recent years, social dialogue ensures comprehensive governance of the labor market. It is an effective instrument to promote crisis recovery, to facilitate adaptation to change in the fair and equitable manner, and to promote open and inclusive societies. Trade unions have proved that they play a crucial role in these major economic and social processes. Allow me, therefore, to seize this opportunity to make a call of, on trade unions to join the conception and implementation of a European Social Action Plan for the development of the European pillar of social rights. Only together and by gathering efforts at the different levels of governance can we take the necessary concrete measures 
to build a fair and sustainable future for the new generation. They deserve it and we can deliver it together, all together. Thank you very much.